So students okay, so in the minister's own backyard. I don't know are how much time is on this opposition or on this camcorder. To this uh, piece of legislation. But I plugged in the power bar. Students aren't alone. So we're going to listen to this for a little while. Of course, there are uh, many people. And here we have Karen, Karen Ng from, uh, well, Madam Speaker, I'm going to have to apologize because uh, she doesn't list the institution where she's from. So let's say that she's just a general member of the public who's quite concerned about this. And she writes, Dear Minister, can you please explain why Bill 18 bans union activists from sitting as elected representatives on college, institute, and university boards of governors? I am an employee at Douglas College, and I'm not aware... There we are. <laughs> it wasn't under her name, but it's in her letter. I am an employee at Douglas College, and I am not aware of any problems that have occurred from electing staff and faculty representatives to our board as mandated by the College and Institution Institutes Act. And you Even know, when these people and that's may have the been thing. active in their union. Boards and she goes on stuff like that, you know, it's sometimes it's very hard to uh, may well contravene you know, attract her and her educated, members constitutional you know, dedicated to individuals to nurture says I am respectfully you know, asking that a mission or a mandate. I know I've had my nonprofit for a long time and no, you know, the poorer you are, the, you know, your gene pool shrinks in terms of uh, you know, I have another letter. available volunteers from, uh, to become board Titus members Gregory. to, you know, what, what your mandate is. Um, Dear Minister, as so, a former student you know, I would think that SFU to start downsizing on that gene pool to, to control, and you know, 18, the, the movement of a society, and in light of what's going on with Occupy Wall Street, I could see why this legislation would be brought in because, you know, BC Liberal government probably sees the union um, body and these employees that work for the union as a, as a, you know, direct threat to their, you know, legislative rules of law because of, you know, cutbacks to, to the... To the, to the lower 19, ranks of the union worker, like the janitors and, you know, the, the cooks in the kitchen and all those things got wiped out in the hospitals and, you know, schools and even in the parliament building. I don't think the people that are janitors have pension plans anymore. That was all wiped out in 2002, 2003. And, uh, you know, this is why you've got this Occupy Wall Street kind of creeping over into Canada because, you know, people are working harder for less money so this is legislation to block a gene pool of board directors that are intelligent and that can process the information that's coming in you know on the table very quickly to uh, be able to deal with the problems at hand in these institutions right this is this this how I this is how I'm connecting the dots and for them to now not be allowed to you know sit on boards and be a part of the process even though they qualify and they have the experience and they understand what they're talking about you know to me again is char character profiling for 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 you know for um, a militarized nation you know to bring in you know, um, a police state, you know, to, to erode on democracy, to take away the opportunity, even though with the forked tongue you're being told you got opportunity, you find out down the line you don't have the opportunity because it came out, it came out not the way that it was said it was going to come out. It came out with a bunch of clauses and a bunch of amendments so that by the time you got to the opportunity, you know, you you know, you had a hundred hurdles to jump over if you even made it over a hundred hurdles. So this, this, I would think this would be important because people are now starting to feel targeted, you know, profiled. Only in the parliament building, they're not going to say it like that because they're professional people and God forbid if they step on somebody's toes and hurt their feelings and, you know, cut to the chase, right? You know, sometimes they have to talk around in circles and, you know, be very careful with the words that they choose because if they don't choose the right word, the speaker in the house, well, you know, you know, it's a supposition, you can't be talking like that, you know, it's just a hypothetical thing, you know, well, you know, you don't mention names and, uh, also weighed in on this and they write to the minister, we are writing on behalf of the 66 thousand academic staff represented by the Canadian Association of University Teachers at 124 universities 
and colleges across Canada to express concern about what we see as anti-democratic provisions in Bill 18. We recognize your government's desire to limit potential conflict of interest for elected members of boards of governors of BC's public universities, colleges and institutes. But the provisions of Bill 18 go far beyond what might be necessary to achieve this end. Prohibiting leaders of faculty and staff association from serving on boards of governors and empowering appointed and ex officio members of boards to remove elected members of boards is a clear violation of democratic principle and practice. Not only are the proposals contrary to long-standing practice in British Columbia universities, colleges and institutes, they are also a reversal of a practice that has worked well for many years across Canada. For more than a hundred years, since the Flavel Royal Commission in 1906, Canadian universities have been characterized by collegial governance structures. A recognition and of the unique nature of post-secondary educational this. institutions whose governance you know, requires the active I've watched a few videos I'm going to say that again, around Madam Speaker, just in case the minister wasn't paying attention. Okay, let's hear. Requires the active participation of the academic staff. Yes, it does. We cannot imagine <laughs> the BC you know, government would want to exclude experience. from a governance role those in whom the academic staff have shown trust by electing them leaders of their association. Nor can we imagine that your government wants to be seen to be given the authority to unelected members of the Board of Governors to oust the elected members. We strongly urge you to amend your legislation by removing sections 19, 20, 32, 34, 49, and 50. We also strongly urge you to enter into discussions with our colleagues in the Confederation of University Faculty Associations of BC and the Federation of Post-Secondary Educators of BC to craft mechanisms that deal constructively with potential conflict of interest in institutional governance while respecting democratic principles and the unique nature of our post-secondary institutions. So, as I was saying, Yours truly, I've watched Wayne a few videos, Peters, you know, around the Occupy James Wall Street moving up here by the art gallery Executive with their, uh, you know, their meetings that they have. Speaker, and uh, they don't put them out as much as they probably uh, should. Uh, they they maybe feel that there's not people watching. I know there's a few people watching because I see the number of count on the video, right? And I'm one of those people that takes the time every now and then to do a search on, you know, Occupy Vancouver just to see what these young people are up to because the majority of them are young people and, you know, obviously in college or university or whatnot, right? And, um, you know, um, under their democratic committee and this that and their system that they've got going you know I can see them trying very very hard to you know to accomplish something of substance and I give them credit for that but at the end of the day I think the government might be afraid of that because I think this is what this legislation is trying to do is squash 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 you know that that uh, they did not consult oh, I don't know how. Like, you know, I can only use myself as a comparison. I'm not no threat to them because they, know, they know I'm a poor person, and the only poor person I'm going to get on my board as a poor person is probably another poor person, right? I, I, don't, I don't frequent in colleges. I don't frequent in universities with higher education. I don't have a, a large gene pool of professional people that are on my side, right? So, you know, my board of directors is pretty much an inactive board and a pretty relaxed board, and, you know, we're, we're pretty informed. Formal, we you know we, we go with the flow right because of the circumstances but you know if you give me a couple of highly educated you know university you know individuals that especially have some experience you know they're in their 30s 40s 50s and 60s they got experience it's not just education you don't get everything from a book you know you get it from experience too right oh boy I think this nonprofit would be a totally different totally in a totally different spot in life but uh, so you know I think this is you know character profiling to to keep a lid on on a growing movement of dissatisfaction you know against a large portion of the population that's being you know chipped away and disenfranchised and oppressed and you know it's I mean obviously poor people have been oppressed for a long time right you know we've had to face disenfranchisements forever ever since birth for a lot of us um, you know kids in school and university I mean they obviously want to you know they're working I have a daughter that's gonna you know she's in grade 11 right now you know 
grade 10, grade 10, grade 11, she's gifted, so she has the ability to go to university, be a doctor, be a nurse. Um, I've got another son that's in university, well, in college, going into university. He's got two years of university, three years of college. Um, you know, the last thing they want to do is be stuck with a $100,000 bill, if not more, and no job. So I think this is where, you know, what these people are fighting for is to make sure that there are available jobs with decent wages so that, you know, we can preserve that middle class and work on the problem of solving poverty that seems to be getting bigger and not smaller with that gap of between the haves and the have-not, right? And so, you know, dirty pool, right? You know, anything to keep the masses down, you know, anyone, you know, only a few can make it in the world, right? And they're in a capitalistic society. Members of the faculty may serve... Corporations get a free pass, Police for the most part, big ones, the ones with the money, you know, BP, those kind of corporations. long played a unique and important role in the governance of our college. Removing any current elected faculty members of boards is undemocratic. Going forward, it would also restrict the democratic process, as it will prevent certain faculty members from running either for the board or for a faculty association executive. Such a step will surely polarize the relationships between administrative and I don't know how much information this camera can hold, but it's, it's going right now. I got it plugged into the hydro, we so urge you to consider we'll see. The legislation before it is passed. So here we, we hear again uh, from people who have I wonder what uh, these board members would be thinking about, you know, making up little care packages this, with uh, all that dehydrated and food that I'm trying to promote and, you know, making sure every student uh, gets gets a care package, especially for the ones that really, really need it, you know, so for their dorm or wherever it is that they're living. That you know, they all saying the starvy student, right? I don't see why we can't, you know, give them a box full of this and a box full of that to supplement their, 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 their you know, their, their food bill. So, and in this case, you know, in this case, this wad would listen to this, their right? And their you know. skills with future generations via the public post-secondary system. They do have an it's going to take five days to upload to this stuff. Huh. In the governance of that system. They do have an important voice that needs to be a part of the governance. And that voice does need to be on equal footing with the appointed members from this government. But this legislation, as all of these people with, uh, I can only imagine And this imagine appointing of this and appointing of, of that, all of you know, again, American politics, say it started with the school districts down there, you know, with the failing school district. If they didn't clean up their act, you know, government, federal government was going to come in and appoint this group of people to turn the, turn the system around and blah, 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 you know. Madam Liberal Speaker. government came in. Next thing you know, they were appointing. They were going. They were making we were threats to appoint, you know, thousands of people that expressed their uh, uh, hallway monitors yeah. to come in and you know monitor the books and monitor the spending do and do all, and take away the powers of the school district, you know, trustees and I don't know if it was city councils. It looks like it's heading in that direction because you know Bill 20 with their audit of uh, municipalities and all this other stuff, right? It's just just so depressing, man. You know, I don't know. It's just going into a military state. However, I think so. Despite all these letters. No, I know I've been living in one for a while. Meetings, That's how I feel. You know, opportunity. It's only a word. Is ignored. There is no five great goals very except for real maybe China. Of a large group of and the sixty percent housing market that isn't even sold to regular Canadians. Of time you know, Canadians can't afford them with all this development going on. To the betterment of public post secondary education. These people will never be able to afford to live anywhere after they get out of college. So, and if they can, it will be all bought up Madam by somebody Speaker, that came, came from, from some different country. Letters, yeah. It talk, cost a million dollars just to buy something nowadays. Well over a thousand, and I know that you must be sitting there wondering if I'm going to plan to read over a thousand letters this afternoon. But, anyway. but I will not do that to you, Madam Speaker. Not that every single one of those voices are equally important to uh, the letters that I've already...